Point of order, Martin Whitfield. For presiding officer, earlier today I sought um, information from the deputy presiding officer regarding an earlier point of order relating to information being available already um, in the public record. And I wondered whether, out of courtesy, you've had an opportunity to consider that and whether you're in a position to respond at the moment or at some later date. Um, I thank Martin Whitfield for his point of order, and it was my intention to return to that, and I will do so now. So I'll return to Martin Whitfield's point of order, which is on the subject of the statement that we're about to discuss being available to others before it was available. Well, the, the report that is the subject of the statement was available to others before it was available to, to, to members. Um, the Minister for Parliamentary Business advised the Bureau last night that due to an inadvertent error, details of the report might enter the public domain before, before being brought to the Chamber. The Bureau decided in light of this that the statement could be brought forward to today. Now, given the importance of this subject and uncertainty about whether all members have had sufficient opportunity to consider the full detail, on this occasion I will allow the statement to be made. And I have made this decision simply to ensure that all members are able to ask questions of the Cabinet Secretary on an equal footing. And I think I've made it very clear my expectation that all significant announcements of government policy should be made in the first instance to this chamber. The next item of business is a statement by Shirley Ann Somerville on Scottish Government response to report by the Independent Advisor on Education Reform. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Shirley Ann Somerville, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. I am very grateful to you and to the Parliamentary Bureau for agreeing to my request to bring forward the statement I had planned to deliver tomorrow. This has been necessary due to an administrative error where information on the content of this statement and some accompanying publications was inadvertently shared outside the Scottish Government. I felt it was therefore important to bring my statement forward to attempt to mitigate the risk of this information being shared publicly and to ensure the staff in the affected organisations were briefed appropriately. Presiding officer, in June 22, uh, on the 22nd of June 2021, I gave a statement to Parliament on the OECD report on Scotland's Curriculum for Excellence. At that time, I announced that we would replace the SQA, consider forming a new curriculum and assessment agency, remove the inspection function from Education Scotland, and consider further reform to that body. I also announced Professor Ken Muir's appointment as an independent advisor on education reform with a remit focused on providing advice on the implementation of the OECD's recommendations for structural and functional change of the SQA and Education Scotland. I am very grateful for the opportunity to update Parliament further to receiving Professor Muir's report. When I asked Professor Muir to undertake this work, I encouraged him to recommend the changes needed to deliver an improved educational experience for children and young people. I would like to put on record my sincere thanks to him for providing me with a thorough, detailed and challenging report. I am also very grateful to all who took part in Professor Muir's engagements and consultation. The response to this exercise has been significant, and I am heartened by our collective commitment to education and the strength of support for change. I would also like to thank the staff, the unions and the management of SQA and Education Scotland for their constructive engagement. Staff at all levels have continued to undertake critical work despite experiencing personal uncertainty about the future roles of their organisations, and I would like to place on record my gratitude for their professionalism and their commitment. In the period ahead, it will be vital that staff in both organisations are supported to allow them to focus on their continuing crucial work. Presiding officer, the case for reform was supported by the OECD report and has been further strengthened by Professor Muir's recommendations. As Professor Muir says in his introduction, his recommendations place children, young people and those teachers and practitioners who support their learning more firmly at the heart of the education system. With this in mind, the Scottish Government welcomes Professor Muir's report and broadly accepts his recommendations. Today I can confirm that the SQA will be replaced and that the Scottish Government will legislate for the creation of a new non-departmental public body with responsibility for the development and awarding of qualifications. Crucially, this body will reflect the cultures and the values we want to see embedded through our education and skills system, one that puts learners at the centre, supports our teachers and practitioners and instils integrity, 
fairness and accountability throughout their approach to recognising achievements in education. I agree with Professor Muir that the accreditation and regulation functions should be independent from the awarding body. However, careful consideration is required in relation to where these functions should sit, in particular ensuring that the independence of these regulatory functions is secured. Further focus work on this aspect, drawing on the knowledge and experience which exists within the SQA, will take place over the next few months. <clears throat> It is often said that nothing is more important in schools than the quality of teaching and school leadership, and providing the best possible support for those that work with learners, no matter the setting, is therefore crucial. I can confirm that we will establish a new agency, building on the expertise within Education Scotland, which will provide excellent leadership and support for curriculum, assessment, learning and teaching, while also having a lead role in the re relation to curriculum for excellence. The OECD challenged us to consider the creation of a curriculum and assessment agency. In understanding the close link to learning and teaching, we believe all these functions should be drawn together in one national agency. <clears throat> I agree with Professor Muir's recommendation that a distinct function of the new agency should be responsive delivery that more consistently meets the needs of teachers and practitioners at local and regional levels. This agency will therefore have a clear set of functions. It will be teacher-facing visible and valued by the profession it serves. I want teachers to feel that this is their agency, responding to their needs and therefore to the needs of learners. An independent inspector will play a crucial role in Scottish education by helping enhance the quality of teaching, learning and leadership while also providing an objective assessment of performance. The Scottish Government intends to legislate to ensure the independence of this new inspectorate. A key early task is to establish a new model of inspection that is supportive, inclusive and able to evaluate the performance of the system itself, nationally and locally. It will be important for the inspectorate to build relationships through consultation and engagement on new approaches to inspection. I also welcome Professor Muir's recommendation in relation to the creation of a shared framework for the inspection of early learning and childcare. This proposal is a step forward. I am, however, conscious of the challenges the ELC sector has raised regarding the dual inspection regime and will consider this recommendation further in context of the National Care Service reforms as we take forward work on the new inspection body. I will come forward with specific proposals to consult with the ELC sector before the summer. This consultation will take place alongside the important work of establishing the independent education inspectorate and will not delay that process. My announcements today are significant are, are designed to strengthen the education landscape and to provide clarity and coherence. However, if we are to place learners at the centre of our education system, we must also reform the culture of the bodies and indeed the system itself. Professor Muir's message in this respect is challenging and we must all do more. A renewed system must reflect the culture and values we want to see embedded throughout. It must be a system that puts learners at the centre and provides excellent support for our teachers and practitioners. But it must also be a system where there is clear accountability. Democratic accountability, organisational accountability, but also accountability to the learners who have a right to expect the highest quality of learning and teaching while giving them the best chance of success. A clear and un unambiguous learner focus must therefore be a feature of the way that we take this work forward. Professor Muir's report contains some hard messages from young people about their experience of education, and one way to address this is to ensure those voices are heard more clearly and more often. We need a culture and mindset that places the needs of individual learners and their learning at the centre of decision-making, all actions and all behaviours. We also need a culture and mindset which ensures that those working with learners can have their professional needs readily supported. A commitment to openness and to meeting the needs of learners and those that work with them must also be clear in the leadership of our system. The new bodies must also be future-proofed in their design. So we must learn, of course, from the experience of the pandemic and must also be ready to further evolve, including because of the work on qualifications and assessment being led by Professor Louise Hayward. I understand that the last two years have been hard and that school staff are weary. However, what we have learned from the pandemic and together with the OECD reports is that there is an impetus for change. Many of those Professor Muir engaged with also felt this was a good time to closely look at the future of education in Scotland. We will therefore lead a national discussion on the vision for a future of Scottish education and will appoint an independent facilitator to assist with this work. 
I am committed to working with everyone in education to accelerate efforts to achieve excellence and equity for Scotland's children and young people, and I will seek to engage as many interests as possible as we take this forward. I hope we can work together, not on a Scottish Government's vision for education, but for a vision for education which we share. This vision can build on existing commitments, such as the OECD recommendations, the National Improvement Framework, the Scottish Attainment Challenge, empowerment, and work already being undertaken across tertiary employer and wider skills and learning landscapes, as well, of course, as the important principles developed in Professor Muir's report. I hope we all share a determination post-pandemic to also intensify efforts to close the poverty-related attainment gap and tackle variation in outcomes achieved by children in different parts of the country. Presiding officer, today I have announced the creation of three new education bodies underpinned by new values and new governance. I have also announced my intention to work in partnership to build a new vision for Scottish education. Those changes are significant and are designed to improve outcomes and build trust in the Scottish education system. Our system has much to be proud of, but needs to evolve and to improve. At the same time, I fully appreciate that the decisions I have announced today will have a direct impact on the staff of both the SQA and Education Scotland. I want to thank them for their continued willingness to deliver in a time of change and I emphasise my assurance that there will be no compulsory redundancies as a result of reform. I am fully committed to continuous and meaningful engagement with all those affected by the reform and will be establishing a forum between the Scottish Government, the SQA and Education Scotland and their trade unions to ensure all staff are involved throughout this process. Some changes will take time, but I do want to move through this agenda at pace with operating models for new bodies in place by the end of this year. I will be discussing the next steps with a wide range of stakeholders as well as the Scottish Education Council and the International Council for Education Advisors. Presiding officer, the work of the OECD, Professor Muir, and in time, Professor Hayward, are providing us with an opportunity to renew key parts of our education system, reimagine the culture of the system, and agree a new vision for Scottish education in a post-pandemic era. Today, I have set out the key decisions in our reform journey, but I now look forward to working with learners, parents, teaching and support staff, the staff from the respective agencies, our partners and, of course, members across the Chamber on how these recommendations can be taken forward. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. I would be grateful if members who wish to ask a question were to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And may I start, along with just about everyone in Scotland, by thanking the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement, or should I say, press summary. Whether you read its contents online or heard about them in this chamber, they are just as depressing and hollow. The SNP have frittered away another opportunity to fix our broken education system. After 15 years of neglect on their watch, Scotland's education system requires a major overhaul, not a rebranding of the SQA and Education Scotland masquerading as serious change. The public are not going to be fooled by this spin when they recognise the magnitude of the problems in education that this SNP government have created and exacerbated. Pupils, teachers and parents were promised a new strategy, but it seems the SNP are only willing to commit, to commit cosmetic changes rather than addressing the failures at the heart of our education system. The idea that the SQA will continue to play a role until 2024 and will have the chance to shape and influence their replacement is outrageous and speaks to the overconfidence ministers continue to have in their own agencies. Where is the leadership and vision? Where is the ambition for this and future generations of Scots? How on earth can we trust the same SNP government who have diminished Scottish education to restore it? when they fail time and time again to rise to the scale of the challenge. Don't our young people deserve more than this? Cabinet Secretary. Well, what I would say to Mr Mandel is that we have uh, you know, broadly accepted uh, Professor Muir's recommendations. So I think you know, he may quite happily attack the, the, the government at will. But I think, to be honest, he also does a disservice to Professor Muir and the work that has been undertaken, as well as the consultation uh, that he spent an exceptionally great deal of time um, undertaking. That is why um, we have um, committed to taking forward the recommendations that we have. 
And I do think it's important that we involve the staff of this agency. I appreciate people will have different views on both those um, agencies and decisions that have been taken in the past. Uh, but there are staff who work there who are exceptionally knowledgeable and exceptionally um, expert um, at their areas of work. And of course, I think that the staff themselves should play a part um, in having a view on what happens uh, with the functions that we're talking about here. As of course, of course, will external stakeholders, trade unions, parents and young people. But I hope everyone agrees that the functions that are carried out by the organisations are all required and that we need those functions in the future. So therefore the question is about the structure, the culture and the governance that underpin those functions. I have spoken about the culture and values and my commitment to a new government. And I do want to work with the staff and with external stakeholders and, as I said, members across the chamber, to see what we can now do to ensure that those culture and values are impinned within our education system and the learners right at the centre. So if members are saying that the functions should be organised incorrectly, I'm more than happy to hear some of the details about how we should do that differently. But if they're not, and what they're talking about is how we move forward with this, then I would genuinely welcome, even with Mr Mandel, the opportunity to work together to achieve the type of system that I've spoken about today with new governance, new values, underpinning that commitment within the agencies that I've spoken about. Martin Whitfield. Michael Mara. Officer. Um, and thanks to Twitter, the Scotsman, the Scottish Youth Parliament and so many more for advance sight of the report. Uh, this statement should have started with an apology uh, for why we have arrived at this point and a little bit of humility as to the mess the Government has created. We should place on record our thanks to the SQA and Education Scotland staff who have used their commitment and expertise to tirelessly work through the pandemic. Like Scotland's young people, they have been shamefully let down by their leadership of the organisations and the ministers of this government. Presiding officer, given the level of expectation and engagement with this report, it is unfathomable that the government would do anything but accept and fool the recommendations it sets out. The shambles this week alone makes clear that the SQA cannot possibly be left to preside over another generation of senior phase pupils when the Cabinet Secretary has made clear today that it is not fit for purpose. Simply put, this cannot be a rebrand of the organisation as it appears to be. As for the sorrowful lack of personal vision or ideas from this government, the new crowdsourced vision for education joins the swollen ranks of reviews and working groups doomed to produce nothing. So I have three questions for the Cabinet Secretary. Will she ensure the current management of the SQA, not the staff, the management, are gone this week and will have no role in the new organisations? Will she work with these benches, as we have set out in the past, to move more quickly on the process of reform too often delayed? And will she move to immediately establish an independent inspectorate for schools as a precursor to the full inspectorate, given the collapse in school inspections in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can, I can absolutely say that this is not a rebranding exercise, and I, I won't go over the reasons for that, um, except, of course, to point to the importance of the uh, governance uh, that we are uh, putting in place. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry about the, the, you know, the, the cynical nature um, of um, the, the members' views on crowdsourcing opinions. I would take that as consultation. I would take that as working yeah. together. It's what governments are always told to do, is that we actually ensure that the Scottish the government doesn't say what the vision is for, for education, but we actually work with other people to develop that vision. It's something that came strongly through the Muir consultation, and it's something I hear very, very loud and clear from stakeholders themselves. Again, I appreciate people have concerns, um, and they have made it loud and clear about the current management um, within the SQA. But I have to say, with the greatest respect, to say sack the management seven weeks before exams start is not a responsible part for government to play. Seven weeks to go, and we will just take the heads away from it. I think that is deeply irresponsible. Um, and, of course, the SQA, including their leadership as well as their staff, will continue to work exceptionally hard to deliver the diet uh, of exams uh, in a few weeks' time. I have spoken about um, my desire to move quickly on this um, issue and to see what can be done to expedite those timetables. I would point out, of course, it does take time if some of these issues are going to go through as legislation. So I think, again, I think it is right that I am 
laying the foundations for the new agencies today, but a great deal of the detail has yet to be agreed. Over the past few weeks, I have actually been asked by trade unions not to make too many detailed announcements today, but to take this as a starting point to work with them. And that is what I have been asked to do, and that is what I have done. So next is, of course, the work on the operating models and that consultation. A bill takes time to go through this Parliament, quite rightly, and I don't think, again, it would be responsible to make changes to the SQA just before an exam diet. So if opposition members don't like the timetable I'm laying out, I'm genuinely interested in what they think I should cut, the consultation with external stakeholders or parliamentary scrutiny. Co-Cap Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, whilst reform is necessary, this is clearly an uncertain time for the staff directly involved, and we must take their anxieties seriously. What assurances can the Cabinet Secretary provide to staff at Education Scotland and the SQA that the Scottish Government will ensure job security, champion the principles of fair work, and undertake meaningful engagement with staff throughout the reform process? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I said in my statement um, that one of my uh, major concerns as we go through this process is, of course, uh, the impact on staff and the uncertainty that any change in the reform process brings. Um, in December, I made um, a commitment um, through um, uh, the reform process that we would look at the terms and conditions of staff and ensure that they were protected. Of course, as I mentioned in my statement, there would be no compulsory redundancies because of the reform um, process. That absolutely does um, remain the case, and I would commend the staff for continuing to work during these uh, really difficult and uncertain um, times. Uh, I understand that what does this mean for us? Information note has been shared with staff today, offering them background on the process so far about the next steps and what this means for them. And I will give my personal commitment, as well as the commitment of my officials, of course, to work very closely um, with um, all staff and, very importantly, with their trade union representatives as we go through this process to pay due respect uh, to the staff, the expertise that they have and how that can be best utilised during this process. Thank you. Before we come to the next question, I would be grateful if we could um, make sure that questions and responses are short and succinct, as many members would like to get in. And I call Megan Gallagher. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It was reported this morning that the SQA and Education Scotland will be scrapped and replaced with a new qualifications body and agency by summer 2024. How can the Scottish Government guarantee a smooth transition to a new qualifications body to ensure that young people and teachers do not have to endure yet further chaos to the examination diet that we have experienced in recent years? And furthermore, does the Cabinet Secretary think it is reasonable that young people have to wait for yet another government report to find out the changes to the education system? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I have laid out the foundations, as I have said, for those new agencies today, but I would go to the point where I have spoken particularly to uh, trade unions over the past few weeks, and they have made very, very clear to me their uh, desire for this not to be a kind of fait accompli from government today, but that we continue to work with them on the details of this. Again, I think that is the right way to make policy, to listen to the uh, professional associations, to listen um, to young people, and that is what I am determined to do. The member raises a very important point about this transition process. Uh, the uh, staff, including the leadership um, of the both organisations, uh, do have incredibly important work to do. Uh, they need to be supported uh, within that process, in the transition process, so that we can uh, ensure both uh, young people and staff uh, that they will be supported during that transition process. That is why we are looking at the operation models very quickly. That is why we are looking at what can be done around shadow uh, organisations, etc., to make sure that we are moving seamlessly into that process. But I will be able to report back uh, further on that uh, to Parliament in due course once we have further discussed that very importantly with the trade unions and with stakeholders. Stuart McMillan to be followed by Martin Whitfield. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome Professor Muir's recognition that the education system must reflect the principles of subsidiarity and genuinely empower teachers and practitioners. How will this be ensured in the new institutional landscape? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I mentioned in my um, statement that this agency needs to look, feel and be 
a, the teachers' agency. So, you know, by default, it will be an agency of government. But I really want to ensure that through the governance structures, uh, through the structures that are being set up uh, around this, that teachers feel that uh, the, the new agency that will replace Education Scotland will be the teachers' um, agency. That is very, very um, important uh, to me, and that is part of the empowerment agenda that we have. So uh, there is still, as I said a number of times now, a great deal of work still to do around that structure and governments, and I am determined to work um, with teachers and with their trade unions to ensure that we embed that type of culture and structure that I have spoken about, and importantly how the governance uh, can work uh, to ensure that we deliver upon that. Martin Whitfield to be followed by Bob Doris. Thank you, Presiding Officer. A young person who started high school at the start of this pandemic will have left before any change discussed to say today will be seen. The Cabinet Secretary has spoken about an operational model by the end of this year, and the Scottish Government have said they will broadly accept most of the recommendations. So, can we have a government debate where we can listen to why only broad acceptance is being done, and when will the draft bill creating the executive non-departmental public body be published? And when will the bill guaranteeing independence of the inspectorate be published? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I certainly hope that that can be done as expeditiously as possible, but much of this will, of course, depend on the consultation that we are about to undertake to ensure uh, that we're getting the detail of that right. So, taking one example, there are a number of views within this chamber, never mind outside this chamber, on governance structures, uh, for example, of the SQA and indeed of the new body uh, that will replace Education Scotland. What are the role of teachers? What's the role of uh, young people within that? And we, of course, need to look at uh, some of the um, reports that have been had in the past about where um, we need to, to, to learn from previous experience, um, both with the SQA and Education Scotland on governance matters. So I'm very determined to say, give one example of that, to be able to work with unions and stakeholders on that. Again, I, I point to, 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 to the timetable and say, you know, I would like to make this timetable as short as possible. But if we do need to consult and if we do need to get a bill through Parliament, then that does unfortunately take time, but that is quite right uh, that it does so. Uh, if members have suggestions about how that could be expedited, I am more than happy uh, to, to have those discussions. But the consultation is exceptionally important, um, as is the parliamentary scrutiny that will happen as we discuss some of the, the different options that we have, for example, on governance. Bob Doris to be followed by Willie Rennie. Presenting officer, the statement outlines significant organisational change over the next couple of years. However, young people sitting exams in just a few weeks' time need certainty and they need stability. Can the Cabinet Secretary assure those pupils and students right across Scotland who are sitting exams this year that the exam diet remains on track and will be unaffected by the reform process that is currently underway? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I think it is very important uh, that I can reassure um, learners that the reform process that is underway uh, will not impact um, on the exam diet that is uh, due to start um, very soon. And I know that both um, the senior leadership and uh, staff within SQA are determined to be able to take that process um, forward um, in a professional manner to ensure learners um, have a, a, a smooth process to take part in, and I wish them every success uh, to those learners when they do so. Willie Rennie to be followed by John Mason. The, the, the SNP government wasted years dragging its feet on breaking up Education Scotland and scrapping the SQA. Meanwhile, Scottish education slipped down the international rankings. So reform is urgent, yet everyone will need to wait for another two years before we get the change that we've been crying out for. Can the Minister guarantee that there will be new leadership of the organisations, or is it going to be the same top people with different roles? Structural reform is not enough. So is the new focus of the Education Agency be on producing top-down policy direction or acting as facilitators for teachers to discuss and develop the curriculum? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I've mentioned a number of times in my statement my absolute desire for the agency uh, not to be seen or to be top down, but to be something that is absolutely uh, responsive uh, to the needs of uh, teachers. And I think that's a, 
a very important uh, and a uh, very significant change uh, that we can make. I know this is uh, something that Education Scotland uh, have been working on, but I think this is an opportunity uh, to take this uh, to the next um, level. Uh, again, the leadership of both organisations will remain critical um, as the organisations do have vital roles within the education system. Uh, the design of an appropriate leadership structure to support delivery of the agreed functions in the new agencies is, of course, uh, a priority uh, to be decided. And once that's agreed by Scottish ministers, we'll ensure that the new bodies are appropriately staffed and led and that processes around recruitment where appropriate are carried out. I call John Mason to be followed by Ross Greer. Uh, thank you. I understand it was the OECD that recommended we should explore uh, assigning curriculum and assessment to a specialist standalone agency. Can the Cabinet Secretary explain why she has adopted this approach and how she sees it being different from what we have now? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, Professor Muir uh, set out in his re report that, uh, in his opinion, a specialist body that just focuses on curriculum and assessment uh, would not be enough to deliver the improved outcomes that he wishes to see for learners, and indeed so does the government. So he has proposed a single agency with a broader um, remit, and uh, we are happy to take up that recommendation and establish uh, that new agency for uh, Scottish education. And I think uh, the work that uh, Professor Muir has done within the consultation to make sure that we can bring um, roles and responsibilities together will help uh, with one of the challenges which the OECD quite rightly pointed out around um, some confusion around uh, roles within Scottish education and therefore of course the leadership within Scottish education and I think what Professor Muir has recommended uh, around the new body uh, will very much tackle some of those challenges the OECD pointed out. Ross Greer to be followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you. One of the themes in the report is that pupils, parents and carers and particularly teachers do not feel uh, respected or trusted by the SQA in Education Scotland. Does the Cabinet Secretary therefore agree that they should all be directly involved in the permanent governance structures of the new agencies, not just in the initial setup phase and not just through arm's length advisory arrangements? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think, as I said um, earlier, one of the, the areas where there are a, a variety of different views about how we can bring pupils and teachers best into this and where that fits into the process, I am absolutely determined that that is um, a permanent feature, certainly not just in the consultation and not just in uh, the set-up um, process. Uh, so it is a matter of how that is done. Um, rather than should it be done. And I think we just need to work through the details of it to ensure, of course, uh, that the structures are in place for good governments. Uh, members across the chamber, I'm sure, including Mr Grey, will have uh, very passionate opinions um, on this. And I'm more than happy to work with um, any member uh, who has a view on the governance structures that they should have uh, within the new organisations. Rona Mackay, to be followed by Stephen Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, like my colleague Ross Green, I'm keen to know how young people must be can be central to the future decision making of the education system, and how the Scottish Government will ensure that learners are central to not not just the process of this reform, but in the years to come, the decision making of institutions outlined today. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I think much of that I have responded to, to my um, answer with Ross Greer, so I won't repeat, but I think it is very important uh, that we do have that directional change that Professor Muir has discussed uh, within his report around putting learners at the centre of everything we do. The challenge, I think, for government um, and then Parliament as this bill will progress around these agencies is how we turn that into reality and how we can embed that within a governance structure to ensure that we can use governance uh, as a way of developing that culture and mindset. And Stephen Kerr. Another week, another educational omni-shambles from this clapped-out government. Appendix B of the report is a revelation. If anyone has any doubt about the failure of 15 years of SNP government, read the key findings of the public consultation. Among those conclusions and inputs were fears that were expressed that the proposed reforms could end up consisting of system changes which simply rebrand the current system rather than providing any meaningful cultural change. The enhanced vision of the new independent inspectorate body will need resources. So will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that the resources are made available, which cannot uh, be, um, this cannot yet be another project that's announced and then no money is set aside to make it happen? Cabinet Secretary. 
Well, I've made very clear uh, that this is not a rebranding exercise. These are three new agencies with new culture and values and new governance structures to support those culture and values. And I'm determined uh, to work with others to ensure that we can embed that where necessary in legislation. And of course, the inspectorate as it exists at the moment um, is resourced. And we will, of course, therefore, um, ensure that the uh, new inspectorate body, when it is set up, is fully resourced to carry out the functions that it is required to do by the statute that will be passed by this Parliament.